Well, hello everyone and welcome to our Wednesday evening devotional. This is Mike McDaniel, the evangelist of the Central Church of Christ in Carothersville, Missouri. And we're so glad that you're watching this video today. I thought that I might speak to you today on being beautiful like Christ. In 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 21, Peter says, Christ also suffered for us, leaving for us an example that ye should follow his steps. And a song which encourages us to follow the example that Jesus left for us is let the beauty of Jesus be seen. This is 392 in our psalm books. And it exhorts us to live in such a way that the beauty of Jesus may be seen in us. The end of the first, the original, the end of the first verse says, let the beauty of Jesus be seen in me. And then the original verse said, All is wonderful passion and purity. O thou spirit divine, all my nature refine, till the beauty of Jesus be seen in me. I want to study the significance of the words in this song and see how they're substantiated by the Bible so that we might be beautiful like Christ. To be beautiful like Christ, we've got to be passionate and pure. We've got to be passionate and pure. Stanza 1 suggests that we be characterized by passion and purity. Let the beauty of Jesus be seen in me. All is wonderful passion and purity. May his spirit divine all my being refine. Let the beauty of Jesus be seen in me. In Isaiah 33, 17, Thine eyes shall see the king in his beauty, and they shall behold the land that is afar off. The prophet Isaiah looked into the distant future when men would behold the king in his beauty. And I believe this is surely a reference to the Messiah and the universality of his reign. And this phrase is used in three of our good songs in the song Redeemed. I know I shall see in his beauty the king in whose law I delight. And then in stepping in the light, when we shall see him, the king in his beauty, how happy, how happy our place at his side. And then the song, the last mile of the way, I shall see the great king in his beauty when I've gone the last mile of the way. As Christians, all of us are looking forward to the day when we can see the king in his beauty. However, if we would one day see the king in his beauty, Jesus and others need to see the beauty of Jesus in us right now. While our Lord was upon the earth, there were glimpses of the king in his beauty, but it was not the physical beauty that the people desired. While he opened the ears of those who would hear him, Many chose to close their ears to his teachings. Jesus was not the king that many had envisioned and desired. He didn't fit the appearance of a king in their minds. Isaiah 53, 2 says, He hath no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. What is emphasized about Jesus that is beautiful is not his physical appearance, but the way that he lived and the doctrine that he taught. The beauty of Christ lay in his passionate desire to do the will of God. John 6, 38, For I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. John 8, 29, And he that sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. This great truth governed the entire life of Christ upon this earth. And this is the reason there was no division between him and his father. There was only one to be pleased. Jesus did not please himself, but he always pleased his father. And if all religious people would do as Jesus did in this respect, there would be no divisions now. All would look to God and please him 
and division would certainly cease. Here's the simple solution to all religious divisions today. Are we willing to let the passion of Christ be seen in us? The beauty of Jesus is also seen in his purity. Psalm 29, 2, give the Lord the glory due unto his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. He is called the Holy One of God by a demon in Luke 4 and verse 34. Where did his beauty lie? It lied in his holiness. 1 Peter 1, 19, but with the precious blood of Christ is of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Hebrews 4.15, For we have not a high priest, which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. 1 John 3 and verse 2, Beloved, now we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in himself purifieth himself even as he is pure. Again, if we would one day see the king in his beauty, Jesus and others need to see the beauty of Jesus in us right now. And that includes his passion and purity. Next, to be beautiful like Christ, we need to be patient when perplexed. Stanza 2 says, when your burden is heavy and hard to bear, when your neighbors refuse all your load to share, when your feelings so blue don't know just what to do, let the beauty of Jesus be seen in you. There are times when our burden or the cross that we must carry is heavy and hard to bear. Some of our load we must bear ourselves. Galatians 6, 5, for every man shall bear his own burden. And in that verse, a, a Greek term for burden is used different from that in verse 2. This word means obligation, personal responsibility, one's own pact. And thus in verse 5, Paul is speaking of every man bearing his own responsibility, fulfilling the purpose of his own life. But then in Galatians 6, 2, bear you one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. Some say, see, here's a contradiction with verse 5. But here in Galatians 6 and 2, the word barren is a different word, boros. It signifies a weight. It refers to the common afflictions of life. It can refer to physical afflictions. 2 Corinthians 5, 4, for we are, we are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened. It can refer to material burdens. First Timothy 5 and verse 16, If any man or woman that believeth have widows, let them relieve them, and let not the church be charged. American Standard says burden, that it may relieve them that are widows indeed. Or it can refer to spiritual burdens. Second Corinthians 1, 8, For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble, which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure above strength. The ESV says burden beyond our strength, insomuch that we despaired even of life. This word refers to any type of hardship which is capable of being shared by brethren. And in such areas, we must help each other. We bear one another's burdens, when we support and sustain one another, help one another in the trials of life, and restore to fellowship when one stumbles, when we love our brother. None of us are totally self-reliant. At times, life depresses us and temptation threatens to crush us. And there may be times when others who could help us will refuse to obey Paul's injunction to bear one another's burdens. In those times, we've got to be patient. Years ago, a man lost his job in his chosen professor, profession due to circumstances beyond his control. He took on two lesser-paying jobs in order to try to make ends meet. 
and yet it still was very difficult to earn enough for him to pay his monthly expenses. And then he reconnected with Joel and Dave, two friends from his past. Joel was a preacher, while Dave was an overseas missionary who was visiting in the U.S. at the time. Both of them, recognizing his predicament, gave him money to help him pay the rent. The man was deeply moved, and as he thought of his friend's actions, he said to himself, I have just seen Jesus Christ. Well, just as he saw Jesus in his friends, others need to see him in us. Paul speaks of Christ in you, the hope of glory, in Colossians 1.27. And he said in Galatians 2.20, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. He also understood that different circumstances can be opportunities for the life of Jesus to be made manifest in our body, 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 10. Do you know someone struggling with physical or financial burdens? Why not let the beauty of Jesus be seen in you by meeting that person's need? And then third, to be beautiful like Christ, we must be prayerful when provoked. Stanza 3 says, When somebody's been so unkind to you, some word spoken that pierces you through and through, think how he was beguiled, spat upon and reviled. Let the beauty of Jesus be seen in you. There will be times when people are unkind to us, Proverbs 12 and verse 18, there is that speaketh like the piercings of a sword. Sometimes in the heat of the moment, words are said like the piercings of a sword. Sarcasm, gossip, character assassination can pierce just like a sword. When those times come, it will help us to let his beauty be seen in us by remembering how he was beguiled. Someone objected to this stanza because one definition of beguile is to mislead, beguile, and deceive. And they say, well, Jesus was not deceived. But there's another definition, and that's to deprive by deceit and cheat. Well, Jesus was certainly cheated out of his rightful judgment by men who deceived other people with their lies. Yet he opened not his mouth to lash out in anger when he was spat upon and reviled. In Luke 23, 33, and when they were come to the place, which is called Calvary, there they crucified him and the male factors, one on the right hand and the other on the left. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots. And the people stood beholding, and the rulers also with them derided him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he be Christ, the chosen of God. And the soldiers also mocked him, coming to him, offering vinegar, and saying, If thou be the king of the Jews, save thyself. Jesus was prayerful when provoked. He prayed for those who provoked him on the cross. 1 Peter 2, 21 through 23, For even here and two were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example, that we should follow his steps. Who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. Who when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously. What four things are we commanded to do by Jesus concerning those who mistreat us in Matthew 5.44? Matthew 5.44, but I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Jesus said, love them. Bless them. Do good to them and pray for them. Let the beauty of Jesus be seen in you.
passionate and pure, patient when perplexed, prayerful when provoked. And then to be beautiful like Christ, we must pleasantly perpetuate his work. Now we look at stanza four. From the dawn of the morning to close of day, in example, in deeds, and in all you say, lay your gifts at his feet, ever strive to keep sweet. Let the beauty of Jesus be seen in you. Jesus said in Luke 9, 23, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Is there ever a time or a place when others should not see the beauty of Jesus in us? Certainly not. We must let the beauty of Jesus be seen every day from morning unto evening because Christianity involves bearing our cross daily. We let his beauty be seen in us by our example in both word and work. There are six areas in which Paul instructed Timothy to be an example in 1 Timothy 4.12. Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. We've got to strive to pleasantly perpetuate the work of Christ. Do you recall what the Jewish leaders said of Peter and John? In Acts 4.13, now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. But clearly it was what they said and how they said it that caused the Jewish leaders to see Jesus in them. Are you willing to lay your gifts and talents at the feet of Christ that others might see him in you? 1 Peter 4.11, if any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth that God in all things might be glorified through Jesus Christ. To whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. If we will let the beauty of Jesus be seen in us each day, in example, in deeds, and in all that we say, then God will be glorified through Christ. We will give him praise and dominion forever and ever. What an inspiring song this is. Let the beauty of Jesus be seen in me. It encourages us to strive to be like Jesus. It reminds me of Psalm 90, 17. And let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us. On a wall near the main entrance to the Alamo in San Antonio, Texas, is a portrait with the following inscription. James Butler Bonham. No picture of him exists. It says, this portrait is of his nephew, Major James Bonham, deceased, who greatly resembled his uncle. It is placed here by the family that people may know the appearance of the man who died for freedom. Well, as you know, no literal portrait of Jesus exists either. However, his likeness can be seen in the lives of those who follow him. Others can come to know of his sacrifice for the cause of freedom to us. Will you follow him today in faith by turning from sin and being baptized to be free from sin by his blood? As a child of God, can you honestly say that others are seeing the beauty of Christ in you? If not, we pray that you'll make that change in your life today. Let's pray together. Father, we're thankful for the day, thankful for its blessings. We pray, Father, that I would comfort the family of Sister Gladys Floyd at this time. Be with Debbie and the family and comfort them. We're so thankful for Gladys, for the great example that she lived before us and memories of her we'll treasure. Father, we're thankful that the beauty of Jesus can be seen in us 
as we seek to follow in his steps. Help us, Father, to manifest the beauty of Jesus in our lives unto others. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks so much for being with us. Tell other people about our videos, will you? Show people to our website. Oh, if you would do that and tell other people about it, maybe send them a link or post it on your social media. We would be so grateful. Thanks again. Hope to see you in worship at the next appointed time. Until then, have a good day.